a tribe of people untouched for thousands of years, a tropical paradise protected by violence. Welcome to North Sentinel Island, the most dangerous island on Earth. In the northeastern area of the Indian Ocean lies the Bay of Bengal, a region rich in history and a region that houses the mysterious North Sentinel Island. This island, roughly half the size of San Francisco, California, or Boston, Massachusetts, is home to a people many consider to be the last uncontacted tribe on planet Earth. The Sentinelese people are thought to be direct descendants of the first humans and have remained isolated from the rest of the world for an estimated 60,000 years. But just how have they managed to keep visitors away from their small piece of tropical paradise? Well, with violence! The Sentinelese have repelled almost all attempts of contact from outsiders. This often includes the tribe firing arrows at any approaching ships or vessels. Since as far back as 1967, researchers have been attempting to befriend the Sentinelese people. Back then, a team of anthropologists went ashore at North Sentinel Island. They waded through the jungle following footsteps, and eventually they found themselves in a small, well-tended village. Though curiously, there were no inhabitants present. There were certainly signs of the Sentinelese, though. The Sentinelese had clearly evacuated their homes in fear of contact with their uninvited guests. And though the anthropological researchers left coconuts, which do not grow on North Sentinel Island, plastic utensils and iron rods as gifts for the tribe, when they returned years later, they were met with the infamous hostile greeting of arrows and attacks. The 1970s and 1980s featured multiple attempts to establish contact with the tribe, but it wasn't until the early 1990s that some considerable progress was made. The Anthropological Survey of India sent a team, and they would be the first group to visit the island to include a female researcher. This fact may have made all the difference, as when the team approached the island, they were not met with the usual hostility. Instead, the Sentinelese people on the beach were calm and seemingly open to making contact. The anthropologist began to float coconuts over to the tribe members. It worked as a peace offering. As to everyone's surprise, the Sentinelese entered the water and collected the fruit. Some members of the research team were then allowed to walk on the beach alongside members of the tribe. This was the closest and by the most amicable interaction any outsiders had ever had with the tribe. A blossoming friendship was not to be, though, as just a few months later, the researchers returned, though now with a much larger team. The increase in numbers likely unsettled the Sentinelese because they initially accepted the familiar gifts of coconuts, but then boarded the anthropologist's ship, attempted to steal more coconuts and even one policeman's rifle, before threatening the researchers with knives. India ceased all attempts to make contact with the Sentinelese in 1997, and anyone to approach the islanders since has been met with deadly resistance. Arrows and knives may seem like an extreme response to seeing a stranger rock up on your beach, but let's not forget that these indigenous people People have been untouched for generations. They likely have no immunity to many diseases present in our society. So close contact with the wrong people and their entire tribe could be wiped out. Just how many people would that be? With no contact, there has been no thorough research nor data collected on the population of North Sentinel Island. Estimates place the number of people within the tribe to be as low as 50 and as high as 500. Observation has been limited. Photography of the islanders is illegal, but there is plenty we do know about the elusive Sentinelese people. The members of the tribe are usually seen wearing no clothes. Instead, the Sentinelese carry their tools, such as hooks and daggers in belts made from bark string. Some also wear decorative necklaces and headwear. And so on North Sentinel Island, everyone is essentially naked all day, every day. The Sentinelese are hunter-gatherers, and their diets consist of local seafood such as mud crabs and mollusks. It is a simple life, but one that the Sentinelese people have protected for longer than most people can comprehend. And they do this fiercely, often with violence, as one unlucky American missionary found out firsthand in 2018. John Allen Chow, an adventure and travel blogger and evangelical Christian, decided that he wanted to spread his religion to the Sentinelese people, with the goal going as far as eventually converting them to Christianity. It is important to note that John Allen Chow did not seek out the necessary permits to visit the island, though. Chow paid two fishermen the equivalent of around 300 US dollars to take him within approximately 500 meters of North Sentinel Island. The determined 26-year-old American then used a canoe to reach one of the most isolated and untouched beaches in the world. Would he be met with arrows and anger? 
Or could this young man make a connection much like the anthropologists of 1991? He was well aware of the risk of approaching the tribe, writing the following in his diary prior to embarking on his journey. Lord, is this island Satan's last stronghold where none have heard or even had the chance to hear your name? I think it's worthwhile to declare Jesus to these people. Please do not be angry at them or at God if I get killed. Don't retrieve my body. On November 15th, 2018, John Allen Chow made contact. He attempted to hand gifts over to the tribe, but it was quickly made clear that Chow was unwelcome on the island. The American retreated, though he did not give up on his mission of establishing a connection with the Sentinelese people. On his next visit, Chow made attempts at communication, though reports suggest he was met with a mixture of laughter, excitement, and at times, uncomfortable silence. The evangelical Christians sang worship songs and offered gifts, but neither of these seemed to improve relations. During this visit, a young boy shot an arrow at the Bible John Allen Chow was holding in front of his chest, the book made for a life-saving shield. And while this arrow should have been the sign for John Allen Chow to turn around and head home, he seemingly took it as motivation to continue. On November 17th, the 26-year-old returned to North Sentinel Island. The last anyone saw of John Allen Chow was when the fishermen watched his body being dragged across the beach by the Sentinelese. Seven fishermen were arrested for the part they played in John Allen Chow's death, and though attempts to recover Chow's body were made, they were eventually abandoned due to the risk associated with coming into contact with the Sentinelese people. In 2021, the Anthropological Survey of India put forth a policy document recommending what they call a hands-off, eyes-on approach where the Sentinelese people are concerned. They stress the need to protect the tribe from any further outside interference and to respect the Sentinelese, their way of life, and their desire to be left alone on their island. North Sentinel Island remains one of the most fascinating places on Earth, though it shall mostly remain a mystery. And that's just how the Sentinelese people like it.